everyone, it's Amin here and today I'm doing a very, very exciting video. I'm going to be talking all about genetic counseling. So some of you might know that I am currently a second year genetic counseling student, so by next year I will be working full time as a genetic counselor. So over on my Instagram, I asked my followers to send in all of their questions and what they wanted to know about genetic counseling since I know it's one of the more newer healthcare professions. So I have a lot of the questions over here and I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can and try to convince you that genetic counseling is the coolest career option for you. So the most common question was, what is a genetic counselor? And this is kind of one of those questions. A lot of genetic counselors have said they have an elevator pitch speech ready for already because they get asked so often. So a genetic counselor is a trained healthcare provider that helps individuals and families navigate any genetic or hereditary concerns. So what that means is that if an individual is concerned about something that is running through their family or they were born with a genetic abnormality, that's something that a genetic counselor might help with. And currently genetic counselors work past just direct patient care. So a lot of genetic counselors can be found working in laboratories or genetic testing companies as well. So another question I got was what are the different specializations and what does the genetic counselor do in those scenarios? So there are three major specializations for genetic counseling and that is prenatal, which works with the pregnant population, pediatric, which works with children, and cancer. So for example, in cancer genetic counseling, a genetic counselor might meet with a individual or a patient who is either concerned about their cancer risk or has already had cancer and believes that there might be a hereditary cause for the cancer running through their family. So typically a genetic counselor will meet with an individual before offering any testing, um, any genetic testing to see if they would be interested, talking through that process, talking through options for either decreasing their chance of developing cancer in the first place or recurring cancers. And then the patient might pursue genetic testing to see if they are a carrier of a hereditary cause for the cancer in the family. And typically a genetic counselor will also be the one providing the results for that genetic testing and talking through next steps for management as well. So that's just in cancer. Genetic counseling varies depending on the specialty that you're in. So for prenatal, typically it's a stricter timeline and you are meeting obviously an individual who is either pregnant at the moment or considering getting pregnant. So there's also preconception genetic counseling. Those are the three main specialties in genetic counseling. There are also a lot of other up and coming specialties such as neurogenetics, cardiology, preconception, And another question I got was at what point do you need to see a genetic counselor? So this is a great question. There are actually many different ways someone might be referred to see a genetic counselor. So one of them is, like I mentioned, if you're concerned that there is hereditary cancer in your family, that is one way. If you are currently pregnant or considering pregnancy, you can do a preconception or prenatal genetic testing. If you were born with a chromosomal abnormality or a, a birth defect, Effect, such as a hole in the heart that might be a reason to see a genetic counselor so there are many many different reasons to see a genetic counselor and typically in Canada at least um, you require a referral from your doctor but there are some options for self-referral genetics so if I haven't convinced you yet that this is the best career for you um, let's talk about how to become a genetic counselor so like I mentioned I'm in my second year of a master's program so after you complete your undergrad you have to do a two-year master program in order to be a genetic counselor and then once you complete that master's program typically individuals write the board certification exam to to be a certified genetic counselor. There are genetic counseling programs all over the world, including UK and Australia, but I'll mostly be focusing on North America because that's where I have the most experience. So as a Canadian, I attend an American institution and Honestly, that's just because there are a lot more opportunities in the States. So even if we're just speaking about the schools, there are about 50 programs in the States, five zero, and there are only four in Canada. So four versus 50. 
So typically each school will have different requirements as to what they need in order to consider you as a strong applicant. Most schools require classes in biology, psychology, and statistics, um, and of course genetics. So on top of the schoolwork, they usually require some kind of advocacy work, some kind of volunteer exposure, which most people complete through a crisis text line, a crisis hotline, or working with individuals with a disability. Honestly, this aspect can be as individualized to you as possible. Whatever you're interested in, whatever you're passionate about, that is usually what I would recommend. Lastly, of course, it's great if you can have some kind of exposure to genetic counseling. So either by shadowing a genetic counselor or volunteering with one or being a genetic counseling assistant, or even just having telephone interviews, informational interviews, if none of those are accessible to you. It's a very competitive program to get into, and a lot of people do have to apply many years in a row or take some time off between undergrad and grad school to make sure that they are a strong enough applicant to get interviews, which leads me to the next part. So most programs will require you to do an in-person interview, but because of COVID, a lot of programs have been switching to online interviews, and I'm sure that will be something that's becoming more popular as time goes on. But for me personally, I had to travel to my interviews. After you've completed your interviews, there is a match system. In this match system, you rank your preferences of schools and the schools will rank preferences of their interviewees. And then there was one match day where everyone either gets matched with a program or they don't. So it's a very intensive application process and I'm completely biased when I say this, but I think that it's worth it. Another question I got was, what is the starting salary of a genetic counselor or the average salary? Which is a great question because especially if you're putting in all of this time and effort, you wanna make sure that you are being compensated accordingly to your education. So in the last few years, statistics have shown that the average uh, salary for a genetic counselor with a patient-centered role is around the 80,000 mark. So 80,000 USD up to 95,000 USD. So that definitely depends on the location that you're working in. Different parts of the states have different um, costs of living and different salary expectations, and it also really depends on the role that you're in. So if you're in a patient-centered role versus a lab role versus an industry role, those can all have very differing salaries as well. And the last question I got was, why did you choose genetic counseling? And that is a great question. I feel like I'm doing my interviews all over again. So I was always, always interested in healthcare, specifically neurology I was really interested in. And I, over time, realized that I didn't want to be in school for as long as it was required for medical school, but I also didn't really feel connected to the idea of being a doctor. And the reason for that was because my own experiences with medical professionals has been short and I felt like they didn't really get to know me or my family on a deeper level. Whereas genetic counselors, they meet with a patient potentially multiple times and get to know their entire family history and their entire personal history. So for me, it felt like I had a way to connect to more individuals and really talk about their health in a way that was not only helpful for them, but for their family members and for their community and also preventative in a way as well. Another reason why I wanted to pursue this career was because I didn't see a lot of people like me in the career and people in my community generally don't know what genetic counseling is. There is no way I could ever explain to my grandparents or even my parents really what genetic counseling is and I really wanted to bring that back to my community as well. And lastly, I really liked the focus on the entire individual when you're taught when you're looking at a patient. It's not only from a medical lens, you're looking at a holistic experience for that individual. To ask about their psychosocial needs, their family life, their employment status, all of these things are really important to try to get a full sense of what this individual's life looks like and what this testing could mean for them and their family members. So if I've convinced you to look into this career, I will link resources down below which I found really important when I was applying for schools or even thinking about applying for schools. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them below in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Genetic counseling is a very new career. Career. It's only about 50 years old, but it's also a very exciting field to get into. So I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up if you did. And subscribe if you want to see more about my life as a genetic counseling student. Thanks for watching!